Hello, algebra students. Welcome back. This is Mr. Bean. In today's lesson, we're going to be talking about how to graph systems of equations, and it will be necessary for you to have a graphing calculator. Now, this first part of the lesson, you won't need one, but the last problem that we do, you will absolutely need to have one. This lesson is, I'm going to focus on how to teach you one with a TI-83 or an 84. The one I'll use is a TI-84, whatever type of model that is with a Texas instrument. Now, you don't have to have an 83 or 84 calculator. You could use a different type of graphing calculator. If you do that, though, understand you're going to have to go search for how to do that yourself, maybe on YouTube or something. Find out how to find a point of intersection. I'll remind you when we get to that point. Uh, also, you could maybe check the App Store or Google Play. If you've got an Android phone, you can usually get them pretty cheap, maybe even free, uh, and I'd get an 83 or 84. The biggest thing is you want to be able to practice with whatever you're allowed to use on your quiz or test. Okay, so for example, an online calculator might be good to help you do your homework, but if you're not allowed to use that on a mastery check or on a test, then you want to get used to you practicing with one. With that, let's talk about what types of solutions we have when we're talking about solving for a system of equations. Well, the first type of solution is just one solution. And what that is, is if I have two separate lines that I'm going to graph, if I have a straight line like this, and then another line like this, it's just the point where they cross. That point right there, it is the intersection point. So that is an X and a Y ordered pair. It's a coordinate point. That's one solution. Now, it's possible for there to be something other than one solution, and that is no solution. This would be in the situation where if your lines never, ever cross. So if I have a line like this, how is that possible that I have a line that doesn't cross? It would be parallel. So that's some key word you want to write down there. Parallel lines will never, ever cross. That's when you have no solution. And then the last thing is infinite solutions. Well, how in the world, do, how do you have a line like this and then have a line that's crossing it an infinite number of times? Well, you could have a curve that's going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Don't draw that because that's not what we're talking about. And infinite solutions in our case, because we're, we're dealing with, I, sh, I maybe even should say that these are linear equations because we're talking about a system of linear equations. The other line is just an, the same exact line on top of it. So it's the situation where you have two different equations, but it represents the same line. Uh, so I don't know, if you wanted to write yourself a little note here, something like that. there's two equations, sorry I'm sloppy, two equations, but it's the same line. This is a really important thing to understand, these three things, because for the next uh, three lessons, today's lesson and then uh, the next two lessons after this, we are going to refer back to either one solution, no solution, or infinite solutions. And it's just meaning one intersection point, no intersections, or a whole bunch of intersections because it's intersecting everywhere. So let's jump into our first example here. We're going to do an example with one solution, meaning the lines will cross. So you've got to write these down if you don't have them yet. Pause and get those written. And now I'm going to graph this. Let's see. Y-intercept of negative 3, 1, 2, 3, and a slope of 2. Let's use a different color. Slope of 2, so I'm up 2 over 1. Now, this is important that you get plenty of dots when you're graphing these because it is extremely important to be accurate on our graphs now. And the reason is because if we're trying to figure out where these lines cross, so I've got the advantage of having a nice straight tool, uh, a line tool. So if we're trying to figure out where these lines cross, then we want to know exactly the point of intersection. And if your lines are sloppy and you're all over the place, it's going to be pretty tough to tell where they intersect. Let's try this next line. One, two. So sorry to all those sloppy people out there, but you better be careful now. One, two. Down one over two. Slope I'm using again. This is the negative one half. Up one left two. Up one left two. Just put as many dots as you can fit on your graph. That will help you when you sketch it to be accurate. And I would recommend maybe using a straight edge, something like that, just to make sure that you are pretty good on your graphs. Now, when we're graphing by hand like this, it will be obvious that the answer is crossing at an intersection point. This right here is your answer, whatever that coordinate point is. So we're not done by just graphing it. We then have to come down here and say the ordered pair of 2, comma, 1. We have to name that intersection point. That's the answer. So you could say x equals 2, y equals 1, but it saves us some time to just write it as a coordinate point. Look at this graph. 
Yeah, thank you, Nickelback. Next example, number two. 2x plus y equals 1. How are we going to graph this? Well, let's just go with the standard form here. I'm going to pull this one over here, subtract the 2x from both sides. I'll get y equals negative 2x plus 1. That makes this easier. And then here, if I subtract an x from both sides, I'll get 2y equals negative x minus 4. Now, this is an important step here. Remember how to do this. When you divide by 2, you have to divide every single term by 2. It's like it distributes, kind of like multiplication distributes, so does division. So now I have y equals negative 1 half x minus 2. Now I can graph these two things. So I'll do this one here. We got a y-intercept of 1 and then a slope of negative 2. So down to right 1, down to right 1, and so forth. Keep going there. Or I could go up to left 1, up to left 1, draw my line. My other line here, I've got a negative 2y intercepts, put my dot there. Let's put as many dots as possible, so negative 1 half. That means down 1, right 2, down 1, right 2, or I could go up 1, left 2. And let's make a line. Good, try to be as accurate as possible. And then this here is my solution. So I write down on the bottom here, my answer is the coordinate point 2, comma, 1, 2, 3, negative 3. There's my solution. All right, example three, we're talking about no solution. Now, what does it mean if there's no solution? It means there's no point of intersection. So the idea here is I should be working with parallel lines. If I do this correctly, that's what no solution is. So let's just double check this. I'm going to rewrite this one. If I subtract an x, I'll get a negative y equals negative x plus 2. Don't forget that there's that negative is attached to the y. Very common mistake. So we'll divide by negative 1. Divide by negative 1, y equals x minus 2. All right, let's graph that real quick. A slope of 1, 1, 1. You probably don't have to have quite as many dots on this one because it's just a slope of 1. That's pretty easy. My other equation, again, I'll subtract the x, so that leaves me with negative y equals negative x minus 1. Divide everything by this negative 1 here to get the y all by itself negative 1, and we get y equals x plus 1. So we'll go up here, and again, it has a slope of 1, so it should just be that nice diagonal line. So what do we put as our answer? The answer is where they intersect. Since these don't ever intersect, we say no solution. It never, ever intersects. No solution for this. Look at this graph. Infinite solutions. Okay, so let's rewrite this equation. I'll subtract 3x from both sides. That leaves me with a negative 9y. Don't forget that negative is attached there. Negative 9y equals negative 3x plus 18. Now I divide everything by negative 9, negative 9, negative 9. That leaves me with y equals 3 ninths is the same as 1 third x. Negative, negative is positive. Positive, negative, negative. So 18 divided by 9 is 2. 1 third x minus 2. Well, what about this one? If I subtract x from both sides, we'll get negative 3y equals negative x plus 6. Divide everything by the coefficient of y there. We're going to get it by itself. And we have y equals 1 third x minus 2. Two. Look at that. They're exactly the same equations. So now you know, since you have exactly the same equation, they started off being different equations, but we solve for y and we see it's the same line. So you only have to graph one line. Let's see here. Y-intercept of negative 2, up 1 over 3. Or I could go down 1, left 3. And then since there is just both those two equations are the same line, we put infinite, infinite, infinite solutions. I'm going to abbreviate there. Solutions. Okay, we've just covered the entire lesson on how to graph by hand. So the hardest part is done. Now you need to pause this video if you do not have a graphing calculator. Go get one. If you have a graphing calculator that is not an 83 or an 84, then you can still watch this to kind of get an idea how to use it. But uh, if you have a different calculator, you need to go research how to find a point of intersection. And that's what I'm going to write on there, is you want to do some type of search of point of intersection. 
intersection. That's what you need to Google or search on YouTube, something like that with your type of graphing calculator. So again, I'm teaching how to do it with a Texas Instrument 84 or an 83. You don't have to do a whole bunch of details of writing all the steps down because I have all the steps at the bottom of your notes right there. Okay, so boom, here they are. I'm just going to show you a couple other things with the graphing calculator to uh, help us work on some things. And that is the first thing I want you to do. Take your graphing calculator, hit this window button right here. There's a button that says window. And I want you to change it to look like these numbers here. Okay, so pause this video and get that done. Don't worry about, I x down this part because that stuff, none of that matters. Some of your calculators won't even have that, but that doesn't really matter for what we're about to do. Okay, you should have that entered if you don't stop this video, keep getting those things entered. So what we have now is, I wanted you to see what, how we can manually change what the graph uh, screen looks like. If we say negative five, that means that right here, this x value is a negative five on the x minimum value. The x maximum is a 30, so the maximum side on the right is 30. If we say the x scale is five, it means it's counting by five. So this would count five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. That's what these little tick marks are doing. It's the scale. So now we talk about the y min and y max. It's the same idea. All the way down here, the y minimum, this is negative 100 at the very bottom. The y max is 50. So way up here, we have a 50. And then what does these little tick marks represent? I set them to go by tens. So you can set your own scale. So it's 10, 20, 30, 40, negative, down to 100, or 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, going up. All right, so those are the only ones that we have to really work with. The x residual, the delta x change in x. Don't worry too much about these. It's a little bit more advanced. We're not going to worry about that at all today. That's really helpful. You're going to get into some lessons later with Mr. Brust. He's going to show you how to move this window around a little bit more in depth. But what we're going to focus on is just keeping having what's called a standard window where we have this is going to be negative 10. This is going to be positive 10. I think the scale is just a 1 when we do a, a uh, standard window. So again, the y minimum is negative 10. The y maximum is positive 10. So it's just negative 10 to positive 10. Y scale is also 1. That's what's called a standard window when we change that. Everything we do today and on your practice is going to be a nice, easy standard window. So I'll show you how to do that in just a second. First thing to do before we can even use the calculator at all on these is we have to solve for y. So let's rewrite this equation. Subtract 2x from both sides. y equals negative 2x minus a 7. All right, there's one equation. Now on this one, let's see, what am I going to get? 7y equals negative 5x plus 7. Divide each term by this 7 here, 7. That leaves me with y equals negative 5 sevenths x plus 1. So what if we were to graph this without a graphing calculator? Let's just try this real quick here. I'm going to plot these two lines and have them just pop up here. Okay, look at this thing. If we were to graph this by hand, look at that solution right there. The answer is not on a grid point. That's really hard to estimate. I mean, we could say it's about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So what, that's going to be about, I'm going to put it in red here. This is not the answer. But about negative 6 point something, maybe 1-ish. And then 5 point, I don't know, 2? I mean, it's really hard to tell. That's an estimate, but it's not very close to being exact. We want to get more precise than just this. So a graphing calculator will help us get really close to what the exact answer is. So here's how we do it. Let's first, and let's move this out of the way. First plug in, go to uh, y equals. So we go to y equals. If there's anything else that's here, you need to just hit clear. So if I had some other numbers here, if you see anything else on your calculator, just hit this clear button right there, and it will clear out that line. If you go up here and you see that one of these plots are on, highlighted like that, you need to also turn those off. That will throw us the, our graphs off, so just hit enter. It toggles on and off if you hit enter when you're highlighting it. And then you can come back down. So make sure the plots are off and that there's nothing else in here. Just clear all those lines. All right, now we plug in negative 2x minus 7. Oh, this is really important. If you do not have a graphing calculator right now, just stop watching. Like, Or at least you got to make sure you come back and watch this again with a graphing calculator. I will tell you right now, if you walk up to one of your teachers 
after this is over and you say, I don't know how to graph with a graphing calculator, we're just going to tell you to go back and watch this because I'm showing you right here, but you need to have a graphing calculator with you when you do this because you're supposed to be following along and trying this as well. One thing I'll point out, how did I get a negative 2x? I used this button right here for a negative. Don't use the minus, use this button as a negative. It'll throw it all off if you put a minus in front of these two numbers. So make sure you use that negative little trick for this. Okay, next is our window. So I could go to this window button and manually type in my window. See, I've got this other one that I was practicing with, but we could do this a much faster. We want a standard window, so I'll click zoom. And then this option, for me it's option six. It might be different on your calculator, so just double check that it says Z standard. So if I go down here and I hit enter, or you can just type the number six in and hit entered, then it jumps to a standard window, negative six to pos or negative 10 to positive 10. Okay, so now I have nice and pretty colored ones. I have a little bit more advanced ones, so you may not have that. That's okay. So now we can see here is the point of intersection. If you don't see this point crossing, then your calculator can't figure out where it's crossing. So if I were to move this screen over and I couldn't even see it, the, there's no way for your calculator to tell you the point of intersection unless it can see it. So that's one trick here. But if you don't see it, then you did something wrong because all these problems you'll be able to see on a standard window. In fact, if I look at your window, Bloop. Now you can see negative 10 to positive 10. All right, let's go back to the graph. I hit this graph button, brings those up. So here's the next step. You ready? You don't have to write these because it's on your notes on that last page. We are going to calculate right there. See in blue? Calculate. So I'm going to hit this, this second button, and then the trace will give me calculate. And what do I want to calculate? There's all these different things that we use in high school math, to, and we want to find the intersection point. So we're going to calculate the intersect. You can either type five or hit enter. And now it'll ask, first curve, are you on? I know it's not a curve, but it just says curve because sometimes they curve. Is this the first line that I want to talk about, this blue one for me? Yes, I'm going to hit enter. And then the second curve, is this the second curve that I want to want? That I want to look at? Yes. See, what if I had like 10 curves here? Then it's asking you specifically which ones you want. So I hit enter. Now the reason it says guess is because sometimes you'll have two places where they cross. Maybe my, my curve came back and crossed twice, so you just go to the one that's closest to the one you want to know about. But you don't even have to do that on this because there's only one intersection point, so you just hit enter. And then it thinks, and there's my answer. Right here, my X and my Y, it gives it to me. I'm going to drag this over here to my screen and save that thing. All right, so, ooh, my answer was, my guess was pretty close. So let's round it to two decimals, negative 6.22 comma, and then 5.44. We'll just round to two decimals for this. Okay, that's how you use the graphing calculator. Isn't that awesome? And that'll give you a rounded answer. It's not exact, but it is pretty darn close to what we're looking for. We'll talk about how you get exact answers with algebra skills in the next two lessons. So there you have all those little steps there so you don't have to write it all out. Uh, just make sure you are proficient with a calculator because that will be on your mastery check. This is Mr. Bean signing off. Good luck, and I will see you back in the next lesson.